When people are talking about high-end suspension tuning, you'll often hear the term damper pot being thrown around. The term damper pot is an abbreviation for damper potentiometer, and all it really means is having a sensor that measures the position of the suspension as the car moves around the circuit. There are multiple types of damper pots that can be used to measure suspension position. Most commonly, this is either with a linear or a rotary potentiometer. A linear potentiometer simply measures the change in a linear position, whereas a rotary potentiometer measures a change in angle. Depending on what you've got available and the space you've got to work with inside your car will depend on which of those two systems you go for. This is an example of two different sizes of damper pot, both linear potentiometers. This is where you've got one end which moves inside of this housing and there is a, an output here that would be run to your logger to spit out a position at each point the logger is measuring the signal in time. If one of these sensors is mounted in parallel with a damper, you would typically have one end attached to the upper part of the damper and the other to the lower. Then when the damper is changing position, moving up and down, the sensor moves with it and sends that signal back to the logger. These don't have to be mounted in parallel with the damper. It's just as relevant for them to be attached to a suspension point. So in that case, you would typically have one part of the sensor attached to the sprung mass of the car, as in the chassis, and the other attached to something like a suspension arm. As long as you know the mathematical relationship between each part of the suspension and the damper, it doesn't actually matter where the sensor is placed, you can always calculate the position of any and every part of the suspension as long as you know the measurement of one point. This of course relies on the assumption that all of the suspension components are rigid, and generally this is a pretty safe assumption as long as the suspension is well built and well serviced. There are lots of different uses for having damper potentiometer data. One of the most obvious ones is just to know how much your suspension is actually moving as you move around the circuit and go through different maneuvers like steering and braking and accelerating. This is really useful information when you're diagnosing handling problems on your car. Another useful way you can use damper potentiometer data is to estimate the level of downforce you are getting from your aero on your car. As long as you know the stiffness of your springs and bump stops and when in the suspension travel your bump stops engage, if you know how far they're moving and you know the stiffness of each one of these elements as well as the motion ratio between the wheel and the damper at each end of your car, you can get a pretty good estimate of how much downforce your car is generating on track. Another way you can make use of damper potentiometer data is by estimating ride height at different points on track. So if you know the relationship between, say, your front splitter and the chassis and how that relates to the suspension, you can create a simple math channel that would show you splitter height at each point on track. In cars with really effective aero floors, like a large front splitter with a diffuser built into the front of it, the proximity from the splitter to the ground is a really critical component in tuning the aero behavior of the car. If you can calculate the ride height of the splitter above the track at each point on the circuit, it is a really useful thing when it comes to tuning your downforce and diagnosing handling problems that can be caused when the splitter gets too close to the ground at some point on track when you're braking. Damping forces in a conventional hydraulic damper are proportional to the velocity that the damper shaft is moving at. In order to calculate velocity, we need to do something called differentiation of the position. All that really means is taking the difference in position from one time step to another and taking the difference in those two positions over a known time step, you can calculate a velocity. In order to get really good velocity data from your damper potentiometers, that damper signal needs to be logged at quite a high frequency. Typically, this logging frequency is between 250 and 1000 Hz. So that means the logger would be recording each position signal between 250 and 1000 times a second. Once you've logged the damper position data at a high enough frequency, this allows the differentiation to be smooth, meaning that you've got a relatively continuous velocity profile coming from each damper potentiometer you got fitted to the car. Once we know the velocity of each damper at all points on the circuit, then this tells us quite a lot about the damping forces we're using in the car. With these velocities, we can start to do some pretty simple statistics. Usually, we're making use of a velocity histogram for each corner of the car. The histogram is simply telling you how much time each damper is spending in which velocity ranges and which direction it's moving. Typically, this is characterized as being either low speed or high speed compression and rebound. Because we know dampers are most sensitive to velocity, 
if we know the velocities they're moving, that tells us quite a lot about the forces they're providing if we know the velocity ranges they're using. Making use of damper speed histograms is not just useful for tuning and understanding the performance on track, it's also a really good tool to understand if there's been a mistake with the settings or damage has happened inside the damper that's stopping it working. This is because you can usually compare one corner of the car to the other, say the front left to the front right, and if you see something really skewed or different on the damper histogram, then this tells you that there's a problem with that damper. That's really useful because it's a really quick way to pick it up while you're actually running on track without needing to remove the damper and have access to a damper dyno to understand if there's something different with that damper. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe. We're constantly releasing new videos, and if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description of this video to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.